This happens to be my favorite place to record videos. I love this one. Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and let's get started and talk more about our Hello World app. Remember, we are still in the section where we are talking about the Hello World app. Currently, our app looks pretty decent. It's not really the amazing app that we will be building later on in the course. But as I click on this button, it does something. Pretty good enough for a basic Hello World app, although it's a little bit more than that. One thing that is bothering me in this particular section is this button. Although it looks like a classic iOS button, but I, I would really like to customize this button to show you some of the bits and pieces of how customization can be done. Now surely later on in the course I will walk you through how to design custom UIs, custom buttons, logins and almost everything that we can do in the iOS features. But really the thing is this button is not something that I am in love with. So I want to customize this. Moreover it should look like a classic button of a web. So we're going to uh, modify that. Before we go ahead and modify that I would like to point you out to one of the resources which we have created in house which is uicolorpicker.com a website where you can go and these are some selected colors which all of them look absolutely beautiful right from variety of variants of red to green yellow and all of that so what I want you to do is go up and just click on anywhere it's it's gonna copy the hex code for the color for you go ahead and pick up your favorite color from it because we are gonna about to use that now in my case I have actually selected the color uh, which is at the top I have actually written them in the comment section uh, tint blue and tint purple this, these are the colors which have happens to be really the most modern one and I happen to love them recently. So we're going to call this one tint blue and tint purple again uh, with the exercise files. These are going to be available to you. So there we go. Now we want to use them to customize some of the buttons and classic things up here. So we're going to go up into the assets. Uh, remember I told you that we actually get our app icons up here, but it's actually a lot more that we can do up here. So go ahead and right click up here and I want to implement a color up here. And in order to get a color up here, first and foremost, I need to copy that color. So I'm going to go back into this and I'm going to copy this tint blue hexadecimal code. So just go ahead and copy that. Moving further into the assets, just right click and I want to add a new color set. I'm going to just click on that. It brings a universal color up here. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to name this color. Since this color is actually tint uh, blue, so I'm going to call this as tint blue. Again, you can call your color whatever you like and whatever the casing you like. I like to call them as all lowercase. Then go ahead and in the color, notice in the input method it says floating point. That's also correct. But I want to go for the 8-bit hexadecimal. Just select that and now all you have to do is replace this with the hex color. Oops, somewhere it's, it's gone. I'm going to select that and I'm going to paste that up here. I'm going to hit enter and there we go. So this gives me a tint blue color that I have already selected. In case you have any other color, just go ahead and select that as well. I want to do the same exercise one more time, but this time for the tint purple color. So I'm going to copy this uh, hex code. Again, you can pick up any hex code. Go up here and I'm going to just uh, simply go ahead, add a new color set and I'm going to just select that. This one is going to be 8-bit hex decimal and I'm going to just replace that. Hit enter so that color actually can take place up here and I'm going to rename the color as tint uh, purple. There we go. Hit enter and there we go. So now we have tint blue and tint purple. The advantage of putting the colors right up here, this means these are universal color which you can use in your application just by the name anywhere. Surely hexadecimal can be directly used as well but this happens to be a better approach if you want to build a complex app which uses these same colors over and over again. So let's go on to the content view. And now it's time that we uh, actually take a look on some of the properties which are going to be a little bit alien to you or for the first time you'll be seeing up. So in the new Swift UI, what you can do is and any place in the text or in the button, you can add more properties. How do we do that? Just after the text, hit a line break and then you can put a dot. Now this dot gives you access to variety of properties. Over the time, we're going to see some of these properties. We'll understand them later on. Right now, we want to see just two of them. First is going to be simply font weight. In the font weight, I want to get a font weight means bold, semi-bold, whatever you want to have. I can put a dot and then I can use a simple semi-bold up here. Obviously, pretty obvious to understand. It's going to give some weight to my existing font, whatever that is. I'm going to add a one more dot up here uh, onto the same uh, indentation. And at this time, I want to give it a font. 
Now, when you just say, I want to give it a font and you put a dot, we have a variety of options that you can see. Call out, caption, footnote, headline, larger title, a lot of them. I want to just go ahead and hit, uh, not that large title actually, I want just the title. So I'm gonna just replace that with the title. Okay, so this is the basic stuff that I have done. Let's see what it does by saving this and hitting that play button so that I can see. And if I'm correct, where is my simulator? There we go. So notice here, now the button is a bit bolder. If you can notice that, and also definitely you can notice that it's a title font, means it's a bit bigger. Surely it's working exactly the way we want, but I want a little bit more onto that so that I can make it more fancier as a button. So what I'm gonna do, these properties were applied to the text itself. Now I want to apply these properties on this button. So I'll go just after this button, I'm gonna hit enter, and again, just by putting a dot, I can add more properties to this. So I'm gonna add a property of a frame. Now this frame means how big or small you want your button to be, or how much framing should be there in the button. Now for the framing, we have two properties that we have to take care. The first one is uh, min width, like how much the minimum. I'm gonna say zero for min width, but I'm gonna modify the max width, which is gonna be how big you want the button to be. Now there are a variety of uh, exact points that you can put up, but one of the property that I am gonna choose in this case is gonna be infinity. That means however the my screen is big, just move it all the way long. Pretty good, so this is all good. Now we have an option of dot padding. That will add a little bit padding on between the button and the text itself. Surely we can customize this padding and we will do it later on, but right now I want to go for the default padding uh, given to me by the Swift UI. Now one more thing, uh, as of now my text appears in the blue color, but since I'm gonna add a little bit of the gradient in the background, I want to add a foreground color. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply say, hey, I need a foreground color. And I'm gonna choose a simple dot white. We don't need to explicitly mention this white color because it's already available in the system. Now let's go ahead and do the magic part, which is the gradient. So how do we apply a gradient? It's really simple, let me scroll up a little bit. And in order to apply a gradient, we have to first and foremost get a background. In the background, we can just simply go ahead and say, I want a linear gradient. Once we have this linear gradient, we have to mention the gradient property up here. So I'm gonna go up in the linear gradient and make sure you have a pair of parentheses, and then I'm gonna simply have this gradient up here. Notice it says uh, you have to mention the gradient, then start point and the end point as well. The easiest one is the start point and the end point, so let's go ahead and hit the tab to just go on to the start point. I'm gonna say dot leading, which is uh, on the very left side, which is leading. I'm gonna hit the tab, oops, I'm gonna hit command Z. So dot leading is what I want to say, not up here. Okay, I command Z a couple of times because I think I messed it up. And there we go. So I'm gonna come up here onto the unit point, we'll remove it, and I'll just say leading. So again, uh, there we go. Make sure you are saying dot leading. Okay, sometime it's messing up. I'll fix that up in a minute. First and foremost, let's go up into the start point and there I want to write leading. Somehow, my Xcode is not really happy when I say uh, dot leading. Again, in the end point, we just have to say I want to go for the trailing. So I'm gonna remove all of it and I'm gonna say dot trailing. There we go. So this is the most basic stuff. Make sure you don't skip this dot part up here. Now once you have this, the only thing that's remaining is defining the gradient itself. Now defining the gradient is also super easy. All you have to do is mention the colors up here. So I'm gonna just write gradient, and again, make sure this time you write with the caps. So I'm gonna just simply say gradient, and then put a pair of parentheses. There we go. And here I have to mention the colors. So again, for the gradient, the two colors are necessary. So I'm gonna say colors put a colon sign and then mention your color. Now when you mention any color, uh, you have to use uh, this list or kind of a square parenthesis. Again, this is a syntactical sugar that is absolutely compulsory. And first comes up the color that you want to start from the very left side. So we're gonna go for uh, simply the color and then color will go up like that pair of parentheses. In the double quotes, I'm gonna mention my color name, which happens to be tint blue. Okay, quite a lot of things that we are putting up here. And this is not all because the gradient is actually comprised of two colors. Uh, that's why we have to actually mention these colors two time. So I'm gonna just copy this one up here. Uh, copy this one. 
and I'm gonna put up a comma because it's a list, I can put up a comma and paste that again. There we go, this time it's gonna be tint purple. Okay, there we go, and hopefully that things are all good. I can actually remove these guys and... Okay, this looks pretty good now. So make sure you understand the syntax, which is super important to understand. I know this is a little bit confusing point up here. So first and foremost, we go for a background. Then after that, we introduce this linear gradient property. It has three things to mention. First, the gradient one. And the second one is the start point, And the third one is the leading point. In the gradient further, we explicitly mention this gradient property, which has a kind of a key value pair, which is the colors. In the colors, we mention a list of colors that will act as a gradient. So we use a list up here. In the list, we mention the colors. So again, this is a color, uh, kind of a constructor that we are using. And in that, we can mention these into just the string, tint blue and tint purple. The reason we are able to mention them is simply because we have added these asset color uh, right up in our project itself. So there we go, pretty classic stuff. And in case I might have made a couple of typos or of something, we will definitely go ahead and fix that up. Again, remember, programming means you are going to introduce errors in your code. The skill of programming is to, ab to be able to resolve them. Now we're gonna hit enter and we are gonna just add one more property, which is one of my favorite one, which is uh, corner radius. I don't like really the squarey button. I like the buttons to be a little bit rounded up. I'm gonna make them really, really round, which is not something I'm a big fan, but still just for the demonstration, I'm gonna add a 40 up here. Let's go ahead and see how much a tweaking of the code is being required for this basic stuff. And there we go, uh, not much, not much. I know this button looks absolutely gigantic, uh, but it's actually pretty beautiful. You can see the shade is nice. Uh, it's touching all the way up. I definitely can introduce a little bit padding between the outside view and up here, but definitely for the later on purpose, we will be doing it. We will be doing it. But right now, I think this is a classic button and I'm pretty sure you have never created such an exhaustive and such a beautiful Hello World app. There we go. And I'm gonna give you a small assignment as well. Remember this, my name right now is very small. I want, what all I want you to do is just increase its font a little bit. If you have watched this video carefully, I'm pretty sure you can do it. No need to change the color, no need to change anything. Just make sure the font is a little bit bigger, at least like this size, my button. And that's all what we are gonna be doing. And in case you are thinking, is this just done with the Hello World app? No, it's not. We have still a couple of more feature that we can add into this Hello World app to make it like full-fledged app for that. I hope you are enjoying these videos. If you are enjoying it, please let me know as well. And that's it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.